to roll over on this. For more, let me bring in Pennsylvania Congressman Joe Sestak, a member of the House Education and Labor Committee. Joe, uh, an insider in the insurance industry today told me that behind closed doors in the Senate, uh, they have protected, I'm talking about the big insurance industry, they have protected broker compensation rates, they have protected the state level management exchange, it's not going to be on a federal level, it's going to be managed on a state level, and antitrust legislation. Now these are three big victories for the insurance industry. Uh, so where's the House, in your opinion, going to stand on this? These are big things when it comes to reeling in costs, keeping costs down, and giving a fair price to consumers and no gouging. What do you think? Well, Ed, first off, what you're talking about is what most ails America, where we're not having principal compromise. We're having compromise of our principles, a special interest in the backdoor room actually helping to shape the deal. That's exactly what shouldn't have happened, and we've criticized it so harshly in the last eight years. So what's the House going to do? Ms. Pelosi, and I was on a teleconference with her the other day, is fighting these issues. She said that she wants those antitrust provisions to get in that bill. How can we not? 95% of all health insurance markets are a monopoly. Right here where I sit in Philadelphia area, one company has 75% of all health insurance plans. And the excise tax, when they in implemented that excise tax, or are about to, they're not just pulling the Cadillac. They're pulling the Chevrolets by 2019 because they indexed it to a wrong inflation rate. We're going to have one-third of all the workers in employer-based plans paying a middle-class tax. Now, no, this has to change. All right, now I'm also told tonight that there's going to be an effort to compromise uh, in the Democratic camp when it comes to taxing benefits and also an income tax increase. The unions are very uptight about the fact that any of their health care benefits would be taxed, so they're going to try to reduce that number, and they're also going to try to increase income tax on the uh, folks who are making over a half a million dollars a year. Would that be acceptable to you? Would any taxing of health care benefits be acceptable to you in the House and, and, and some of your, your colleagues there? In I think what you are going to see, and I will accept that I'm opposed to this excise tax, but if they did raise it dramatically, the amount of a plan that would actually be taxed, and I'm not talking about $23,000 per family, I'm talking those high-paid executive Cadillac plans and tied to the right inflation. What is a Cadillac so plan, Joe? Joe, what is a Cadillac plan? I've had a lot of email. Right. And, right, now, right now, what they call a Cadillac plan is if you're a single person, about $8,000, $23,000, $3,000 for a family of about four. And here's what's wrong with it. So that number many, floats around a lot, too. Absolutely. Many yeah. of these workers actually negotiated these plans and took a cut in pay in order to have health care plans for their families. And I think that's absolutely wrong. You're probably going to see some combination of that Medicare payroll tax, that surtax on the uh, those over uh, 200, uh, excuse me, over that 500,000, yeah. and then you're going to see somewhat, probably at a much higher level, I hope, much higher level of that excise tax. I think that, in the reality to you, Ed, is where we're going to end up. The bottom line is to step back. That is politically tough for the president because he told uh, union leaders that he would not go after their benefits and tax them. It's going to be, uh, you know, a hit on middle class families. Yes. And, and I, I just, I don't think, I don't see how that's going to be a political winner, especially uh, in an election year. And, and, it, and it's not. But, Ed, if, and, and look, I am not there yeah. because I still feel we're in there battling. And we are Democrats that should understand that this is about the working family that George Bush, over the last eight years, you just talked about how many jobs were created in George Bush's regime. Only one million jobs have been created in this whole eight years net, and in President Clinton's, 23 million had. So we've got to remember that these workers, their median level of income decreased during the yeah. uh, last eight years, $2,000. They negotiated the reason why they shouldn't be hitting exactly. their Exactly. Yeah. So if you're going to have an excise tax, place it all the way on those, you know, up to about... You know, very high up there, sure. so it's not on the working family, and that's the key thing we've got to make. Congressman, great upon. to have you with us tonight. Appreciate. Thanks you for having me, Ed. Joe Sestek, Pennsylvania.